but me and my peeps, we're not going to take this lion down. So I'm going to say to Kellyanne and others, it's time to pipe down. You've been warned. Oh, sh I've had about enough. We're going to get into a little bit of drama because Dan Bongino is going to call out Kellyanne Conway for possibly being a saboteur within the Trump administration. Now, I did not pre-watch this video, so I don't have all the context. But, you know, the fact that he's taking shots at Kellyanne Conway, who's been a loyal soldier to Donald Trump, that's really telling. And it kind of just goes to show you that Trump world is spiraling. You know, you've got Republican on Republican violence everywhere. Cat turd going up against Matt Walsh and Tim Pool. You've got homophobic streamers uh, going after white supremacist streamers like Nick Fuentes for saying that Trump is going to lose. And if he doesn't give in to his demands, then he's going to encourage Groypers to vote against Donald Trump. Like it's all just chaos right now. And um, I'm, I'm really uh, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. But of course, whenever I talk about Dan Bongino, I've got to show the uh, legendary tweet from uh, the Kid Marrow, uh, because I think that it was a couple years ago, uh, so 2019, so five years ago, uh, Dan Bongino was going after them, saying the biggest talkers are always the biggest cowards, fake tough guy. He was calling the Kid Marrow fake tough guy. And the Kid Marrow bodied him with these tweets here, saying, Dan, your head shaped like the brave little toaster. Shut the fuck up. Stop trying to ride my wave fucking bozo. Now, Ever since that tweet, I cannot unsee the brave little toaster. Um, his head is actually shaped like a square. It's it, it's it's a cube. Like it, it's fucking insane. But but he adds more to it. He said his head is shaped like a GameCube, and <laughs> he's really over here talking spicy fucking Big Mac box head ass. Again, I see GameCube when I look at him. So the kid Marrow bodied him. Um, so that's what I think about. And what's funny is that Dan Bongino actually blocked me because I also called him GameCube head, GameCube head. And I said that his head was shaped like the brave little toaster. So he's apparently like very sensitive about this. It is uncanny, right? It is uncanny. So, okay. With that being said, getting that out of my system, let's hear what he has to say about Kellyanne Conway, who is apparently a saboteur. Um, I don't know why he's saying this, but let's, let's just watch. Do we? Well, maybe they do, because I sent them the article a few minutes ago. Get your friends. Text your friends right now, Bongino Army. Tell them they need to tune in. They don't have to okay, I, I'm sorry. I have to say more about his head. It's time to give up. Shave it. Okay? I don't know what he's doing with uh, with his hairline. It looks like he's shaving it back. Like, he sh he's shaving it back further than it needs to be. Maybe that's just the way that his hairline goes. Either way, I think that it's receded enough to where if it were me, I would make the call. I'd say, okay. We'll rock a bald head at this point. It's fine. You know, uh, it, there'll be some adjustment. But I think it would look much more normal if he shaved his head. But because he has, like, the hair that goes all the way back, it's giving GameCube. Especially. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> Trying to stop obsessing about his uh, cube, cube-shaped cube head. So. To watch the whole show, then we got to watch this right now. We have two big problems right now in this election. It's not the VP selection. It's not Trump's messaging. That's all bullshit. It's none of that stuff, okay? Are you sure? It's not Trump's messaging? You don't think that there's anything wrong with him speculating about whether or not Kamala Harris lied about being black? You don't think that there's anything that might turn off voters? Uh, you know, when he says, oh, she AI'd her crowds. You don't think there's anything wrong with that, Dan? Really? Listen, I get that your head is shaped like a cube, but... Your head's big enough to house a brain that can at least comprehend, like, basic common sense. I'd hope. So, I mean, like, anybody can see the messaging is ass, okay? The messaging is bad. And if you can't admit that, then that just tells me you're a fucking sycophant who uh, is never going to criticize Donald Trump. People who can't criticize candidates they're supporting never trust them because it, politics is just a team sport to them. But let's uh, listen to what this GameCube headass has to say. Forget that. Throw that in the garbage. We heard that in 2016. And he went on to win pretty handily, by the way, in the Electoral College. OK, we have two things going on. There's a lot of internal sabotage going on right now that I honestly did not want to highlight because I would like to stay focused on the Democrats. And I was hoping it would go away. It's not. And now we're going to out it today. And second, Damn. the media is now gone 
I mean, a, a, a full, full blown Pravda. I mean, beyond Pravda. They'll actually make Pravda look like honest brokers. Let's address the sabotage. Let's hear it. So this morning I'm sitting here, I'm putting the show together, and it's late. This is probably the latest cut I ever said over to my team right before I walked upstairs. And I said, guys, you got to put this in the show. I see this Daily Mail article, August 14, 2022. I believe that's today, right? Inside Trump's meltdown, the ex-president is lighting (laughs) up his staff because he's pissed about picking J.D. Vance. As insiders feel he's going to fire two extremely talented campaign gurus. Wow, I love this. I love this. Hearing him read that headline is so satisfying. Martha Williams Daily Mail. (laughs) Again, I was going to let this go, not because I didn't want to put it out there or expose it, but because I want to stay focused on winning and I felt like it was a distraction. And all I care about is... sorry, he's being such a fucking drama queen right now. (laughs) I mean, listen... Between now and November, there's going to be approximately 10 million fucking headlines, all negative about Donald Trump shitting himself and being an idiot. If this one headline has already got you so fucking angry, I mean, buckle up, man, because it's going to be a long election for you, bud. This cutesy time being over and winning. I care about ruthless political tactics. That's all I care about. However, this is getting tiresome. Folks in the chat, any idea what's going on with this article? They're anti-Trump? I don't know. Is this Dora the Explorer? You know Kellyanne Conway? Stop asking questions, okay? Fill us in. All right. Here's the tea. Oh, that's that was. That's a... Wait. I'm here. What was that again? You know Kellyanne Conway? Never heard of her. Oh, that's that was. That's a... Wait. I'm here. Conway. Oh, that's that was. That's a... I'm sorry. Am I am I am I missing something here? This man is this man is unra- he's unraveling. What the fuck? He's genuinely unhinged. I'm hearing some This is low key how Biden sounded in interviews. <laughs> Oh God! I, we're two minutes in, and I'm really enjoying this so far. Yeah, he's speaking in tongue in tongues. Some things from some things from some things from some people from some people for a while now. That she's probably not that happy about JD Vance being picked. I mean, most Republicans aren't because he's a fucking disaster. Now, I'm sure he's going to explain more, but is the tea that, like, she doesn't like J.D. Vance? Because I'm sure that, like, everyone in Trump's circle is like, why the fuck did he pick this idiot? But we'll let him continue. I'm telling you, I talk to people a lot who know a lot of things. Okay. This story, put that headline up again. It's bullshit. Oh, look at his eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's no secret I like J.D. Vance. Put that. I'm telling you this with absolute objectivity. I have not spoken to J.D. Vance about this, but I have spoken to other people. This story about President Trump being upset about picking J.D. Vance is bullshit. It is absolute bullshit. He Listen, this could be a bullshit story. There's a bunch of anonymous sources. Oftentimes they're incorrect. They leak things to the press. They want to create a narrative. They want to, you know, um, put feelers out there to see how people are going to respond to something. It's possible that this story is not correct and Trump isn't lighting up staff because he's pissed about picking J.D. Vance. With that being said, though, is it plausible to assume that Trump is uh, feeling some buyer's remorse? Of course it is. J.D. Vance is one of the most unpopular vice presidential candidates in modern American history. He is less popular than Sarah fucking Palin. Do you know how bad you have to be to be less popular than Sarah Palin? Come on, man. Come on. I think Dan Bongino is just biased because he is a JD dick rider and he can't fathom that, you know, Trump would be dissatisfied with this pick. But Trump is dissatisfied with the pick. There's the New York Times article where Trump was in a meeting with donors and he was asked about, you know, how do you feel about Democrats framing you as weird? And Trump's response told us everything we need to know. He said, 
they weren't saying that about me. They're saying that about JD or something, something like that. So, of course, he regrets picking JD Vance. And what I love is that, you know, since JD Vance was such a bad pick, Republicans tried to make it seem as if, you know, uh, Kamala made a comparably bad pick by choosing Tim Walz. I think the day after she chose Walz, Kellyanne Conway tweeted out, oh, it's Tim Walz. Oh, what a relief. Phew. So they're making it seem like, oh, she just fucked up so bad. Turns out Tim Walz is extremely popular and has the highest approval rating of everyone, even more so than Kamala Harris. So it turns out Tim Walz, really good pick. Teddy Vance, not so much. His numbers continue to go down. So what he's saying here, like, I understand that maybe the article is hyperbolic overall, though. 0% chance Trump does not regret picking J.D. Vance. I think that's cope if he tells himself otherwise. He killed it on this weekend show. Of course, there was going to be an oppo drop after J.D. Vance was picked. If they picked Rubio, Bergram, or any or Tim Scott or anyone else, there was going to be an oppo drop. J.D. Vance, smooth, smooth sail. I agree with that, but it's also true on the opposite side. Like Republicans were, were trying to say, oh, man, if, if Harris picked Shapiro, that would have been great. When we all know that they would have called Shapiro a, a communist like that. Now, it's unquestionably true that Democrats would have done an oppo drop on Bergam or Rubio. But here's the thing. There maybe wouldn't have been as much shit to work with. With J.D. Vance, there is endless things to work with because, I don't know, for like a year or so, he went on... 25 podcasts a day and said the most crazy shit any of us has ever heard. So the fact that there's so much there is the problem. The fact that he got in the race and immediately the childless cat lady comment pissed off so many people, that's a problem. Are there any comments that, uh, you know, Doug Burgum or Marco Rubio made that would have gone as much play? I genuinely don't think so. Um, so yes, there would have been oppo research. This is an election. But J.D. Vance is an objectively bad pick. You know, uh, I'm not saying that because of vibes or because I don't like him. I'm saying that because that's what the numbers say. That's what the data indicates. Americans don't fuck with him because they don't like him. They think he's weird. They think that he's insulting women. And overall, he's just too authoritarian. He wants to ban porn. He's against childless cat ladies. Like, he's a freak. And so Americans just, they don't like him. Right through that crushed it on the weekend shows and is now lighting it up the lighting up the internet with viral clips this story's bs i suspect strongly this was a leak from people who wanted another candidate for vice president i'm hearing from some friends of mine that this is the kellyanne conway camp now if you look oh so he's trying to insinuate that kellyanne conway is doing what Nancy Pelosi did, albeit on the Republican side. So in the same way that Nancy Pelosi worked behind the scenes to get Biden to drop out, Kellyanne Conway is doing the same thing. Um, I think if he is making that insinuation, it's a little bit of a stretch. I think that Kellyanne Conway is probably dissatisfied with the pick. Uh, anybody who wants to win should be. Um, but I don't think there's this coordinated campaign to sink J.D. Vance. And I think he's making a big deal about this because it's the Daily Mail. This is a trash rag to begin with, right? So anything that they print, I'm taking with a grain of salt. But the fact that he thinks like maybe this is a sign of some sort of a conspiracy with Kellyanne Conway trying to pull a Pelosi and, you know, get J.D. Vance to drop out. Uh, I think he's kind of reaching here. Uh, to be fair, I don't necessarily know if that's what he's saying, but he's heavily implying this. Look at Kellyanne Conway and where some of the money in that sphere is coming from. There is an interest in Ukrainian politics and some of the other vice presidential candidates. Oh, are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Some of the other candidates were very interested in a more muscular posture in Ukraine where there was a lot of money to be made for a lot of people. J.D. Vance is interested in a more cautious approach to Ukraine. So the money train may have dried up a little bit. So Okay. The reason why this doesn't make sense is because doesn't Trump basically have the same position as J.D. Vance on Ukraine? So, I mean, if they got somebody else who was more of a hardliner on the issue, 
would that really make that big of a difference at the end of the day? Because Trump is going to take the same posture and be the same. I, see, this is why I think that he's reaching a little bit too much to say that this is a conspiracy. Because I feel like if they wanted to get J.D. Vance out, I don't think that that motive makes sense to me. The motive would just be we want him out because he's bringing down the ticket. He's dragging down the fucking ticket. So get him off so we can win. I mean, look, we all saw what happened when, you know, Joe Biden was kicked to the curb. Kamala surged. So maybe they want to try to, uh, you know, see if that magic can happen for them. You know, kick off J.D. Vance, bring on Burgum, and then all of a sudden, you know, Trump surges. I don't think that a VP candidate would have that effect. Nonetheless, I think that they think it's worth trying, right? Now, I don't know, logistically speaking, if you can even get J.D. Vance off the ticket now because, you know, early voting, um, I think that's already started in some states. I'm not sure. But, I mean, we're, we're, we're like two months away from the election, essentially, a little more than two months. So it's going to be hard to replace him, right? He's on the ticket already. But we'll let him continue. A lot of people are really upset. So instead of shutting the up, I'm trying to get the language under control. Instead of just shutting up and trying to win now with this great ticket, there are people out there sabotaging the ticket right now because it looks like their influence, Wayne, because let's just say, is everybody picking up what I'm putting down that they told other people, don't you worry, I'm going to get this guy picked as VP and don't you sweat that Ukraine thing. Okay, his energy is giving Charlie in the mailroom. Um, I think that if if he wanted to argue that Kellyanne Conway is trying to sabotage J.D. Vance, you can make this case without being so hyperbolic. Um, and also the way that he's he's doing it is getting very goofy. You know, the uh, the word vomit, the uh, the weird sounds he's making. I don't know. He's not he's not convincing me. Everybody over there picking up what am I being? Producer Jim, you text me. You get, you get you get where I'm going with this? We know what you're trying to fucking say, Jesus Christ. But, you know, he's got to make sure that the staff is still with him because he's spitting so much truth here. It's hard to follow along. You thought I was going to be quiet about this, didn't you? You thought like, oh, he'll just let it go. Listen to me. The Bongino army is the most powerful force right now in conservative politics. Is there a Bongino army? Do many people watch Bongino? I mean, what he's saying here is, I don't know, man. This is coming off as so cringe. Okay. Just a fact. It's just a fact. Thanks to you. Not to me. I'm only one guy. There's nothing powerful about me. I need a knee replacement. My shoulders don't work. I can barely bench press the 150 pounds anymore. I'm falling apart. I can tell. I'm a collapsing, rotting meat bucket right now. Okay. <laughs> this is, the more he talks, uh, the less sold I am on what he's selling me okay now now i'm completely off the conspiracy train i don't think kellyanne conway has had anything to do with this he's trying to like make it seem like kellyanne conway is some big villain but you're assassinating your own character here right yeah weird flex but okay <laughs> you're, you're assassinating your own character here you're making yourself seem so uncredible that nobody's going to take you seriously but my brain still works okay that's debatable it can barely sit in that cube-shaped head. <laughs> Brave little toaster-ass motherfucker. <laughs> I had to. I had to. Okay. And I am a foot soldier in an army full of people that has grown very powerful. We are the biggest conservative live streamer in the world. It's not even a close second anymore. Is that true? Like, this dude is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. I, w I would assume that the more popular live streamers would be Ben Shapiro. I mean, I hate him, but objectively speaking, much more popular than Dan Bongino. Does anybody even listen to this guy? Like, I never hear about him. And he has me blocked, yes. But come on. He has crazy numbers on Rumble. Okay. If he has crazy numbers on Rumble, sure. But, like, not even close in terms of, like, some of the top conservative streamers. I feel like that's... That's demented if he thinks that about himself. He could get good numbers without being like 
one of the best. I think he's just like high on his own supply. Uh, I don't know. And what does all of this like auto fellatio have to do with the conspiracy about Kellyanne Conway? Like, I, I don't understand why he has to hype himself up. You don't have to like it. I don't really give a shit. But me and my peeps, we're not going to take this lying down. So I'm going to say to Kellyanne and others, <laughs> it's time to pipe down. You've been warned. Oh, shit. I've had about enough. J.D. Vance was a great pick. J.D. Vance has upsides and downsides like any other pick, but he's fantastic. He's been doing great, and the leak's got to stop. You know that story's bullshit. The president, they love J.D. Vance. You're making this up. These are leaks designed to sabotage the campaign because there's a whole lot of money to be made by making sure you get people interested in funding your endeavors in that position. I'm really sorry to have to bring this up, folks. We should be focused on winning. But according to this article I saw this morning, which that's it, rope, end of it, I'm done. That's really stupid. Let me let me check Kellyanne Conway's Twitter. How does she respond? I would like to see a retort from her. Oh, she hasn't tweeted since August 9th. And then she she shared this video of her appearance on Fox News and you have the player and then the video is like really teeny Back a tiny. little bit as the attack dog on the other side. What Vance did yesterday This is such a boomer thing to do. Like, what the fuck is this? So I guess we don't have a response. Let me check her replies really quick just to be sure. No, nothing. Oh, and here she is saying J.D. Vance is hitting his stride this week. So she's complimenting J.D. Vance, and Dan Bongino is like, I know you're sabotaging her, you fucker. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm going to have to side with Kellyanne Conway here, even though she posts this dumbass small video inside of a bigger video um i think that there's there's no evidence to the claim that she planted that story in the daily mail and, and even if she did uh you know nobody nobody takes the daily mail seriously so this is an l all around for uh, my guy uh dan bongino here he's unhinged he looks disheveled and he needs to give up on that hairline Shave it off, brother. You're going to be so much happier. You, you, like, you're going to feel a little bit self-conscious at first, like for the first like week or so. But then you're going to be like, oh, I'm so glad I decided to shave my head. Um, because it just right now, again, it's still giving GameCube. And it looks fucked up. The hairline's fucked up. Just shave it off. Uh, and if you shaved it off, I think that you would actually look uh, a little bit tougher. Like you would look more tough which is important because he's trying to project strength. Um, but it just, when you got that goofy ass hairline and your cube shaped head, it just, the tough guy shit doesn't work. That shtick is just not working. It's giving Chia pet. Oh my God. Yeah, it is. Like when you, when you put the seeds over the top of the pot. Yeah. Before, before the plant starts growing. That's so good. Neon wrath. Holy shit. Come. Uh, uh, do not come. 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 Welcome come. to the come zone. Uh, uh, uh.